Hello, performance management students. In this video, let's talk about cost, volume, profit analysis, otherwise known as CVP analysis. We'll look at what CVP analysis tells us, namely, what's our break-even point and what's our margin of safety. We'll talk about what those numbers mean, and then we will learn how to calculate them in the context of a past exam question. CVP analysis describes a set of techniques that help us understand two very important things. One, break-even point. Break-even point describes the activity level where our total costs equal our revenue, where we are at neither a profit nor a loss. And break-even point can be described in either units or sales revenue. Either way is fine. Once we understand our break-even point with CVP analysis, we can then find our company's margin of safety. Margin of safety describes the difference between the break-even point and a budgeted or expected level of activity. Margin of safety tells us how much sales need to either increase or decrease to hit our break-even point. We can use a break-even chart to visualize these concepts. Now, a break-even chart is a two-dimensional graph and it shows the activity level on the horizontal, horizontal or the x-axis and then total cost and revenue items on the y-axis. And we would begin by finding our fixed costs, and we could place that on the vertical axis of our break-even chart. After we understand our fixed costs, we could then add to our graph our total variable costs. That would be an upward sloping line like this variable cost. Remember the incremental cost per unit that we incur. So total variable costs would then be the variable cost per unit times the activity level. So that describes, that line describes our total variable costs. Now if I add the variable costs to our fixed costs, our total variable costs to our fixed costs, then we have our total cost line right here on our break-even chart. Just for clarity, I'm now going to delete the variable cost line. You know where it is. Now we can add our total revenue to our break-even chart, and that would look something like this, and I can use TR for total revenue. With the break-even chart, we can now understand the concepts of break-even point and margin of safety more easily. Here, in this area of the graph, we see that our total costs are exceeding the total revenue at a point. So we're making a loss there because our revenue has not covered our costs. Now, if we move up to here, now we are in the profit zone because here, for example, at this point, our total revenue is exceeding our total costs. So at that point, we are at profit. Now, ladies and gentlemen, as you can see, here is our break-even point, where the total revenue equals the total costs. Let's imagine that the break-even point was 100,000 units. So now we know for planning purposes we would need to achieve 100,000 units uh, to break even 
to achieve a profit of zero, essentially. Anything above 100,000 K, we are now earning a profit. Now, imagine the second point, let's say, was 190,000. Let's say that was our budgeted activity. We now see the margin of safety is the difference between a budgeted or planned activity level and the break-even point. So we see that our margin of safety in this case would be 90,000 units. Sales could drop by up to 90,000 units and we'd still be in profit. Now that you understand the concepts of break-even point and margin of safety, let's practice calculating them. And to do that, I've got some information from an activity that I found in the ACCA Study Hub. So after this video, you could jump into the Study Hub and you can practice more of these activities on your own. Well, with these figures, let's do two things. Let's first calculate the break-even point, and secondly, we'll calculate the margin of safety if we assume their budgeted sales were 20,000 units. Well, let's see what info we have. And we see the company makes a single product called the Gamma, and their selling price is $100. The variable cost per unit is $20, and they have fixed cost per year of $1 million. So first thing we've got to remember is the idea of contribution. Very important concept. And contribution is the selling price minus the variable cost per unit. Think about it this way. We sell one of our units. From the revenue that we earn, we need to pay the variable cost for making and selling that unit. What's left over contributes to the fixed costs. So we sell our unit. We pay the variable cost. What's left over contributes to the fixed costs. Once we've paid our fixed costs, what's left over then contributes to profit. So that's the idea of contribution per unit. Now to calculate the break-even point, which I'll abbreviate BEP, break-even point, we need to find our fixed costs and then we divide the fixed costs by that contribution per unit. That will tell us the break-even point in units. If you'd like to pause the video here and try it yourself, that's a great thing to do. Let's do it together. So we see the fixed costs are a million dollars. We see our contribution per unit, $100 minus $20 is $80 per unit. And that would be equal to 12,500 units. We could also calculate the break even point in sales revenue. Before I did it in units, now we could do it in sales revenue. Here the numerator will remain the same. It's still going to be our fixed costs, right, in dollars. But in the denominator, now we're going to put the contribution to sales ratio, which we abbreviate CS ratio. And how do we calculate a CS ratio? Well, it's going to be the contribution per unit over the price. And do we have the contribution? Yes, we do. We said that was $80 over $100. That's equal to 0 0.8, the CS ratio the contribution to sales ratio. So now 
we can put those fixed costs back here. And we divide by 0 0.8. And we get a margin of safety in sales revenue terms of $1,250,000. Now, with that information, we can calculate the margin of safety with that assumed budgeted sales of 20,000 units. Well, I made a fresh break-even chart, and I've placed my break-even point in units onto the charts. And if I now place my budgeted sales of 20,000 units, that margin of safety becomes apparent. And it's the difference between the 20 and the 12.5 or seven or 7,500 units. So we can express the margin of safety here in units. Sales can drop by 7.5 thousand units and we hit the break even point or as a percentage of sales so if we did it that way that would tell us that sales could drop 37.5 percent before we break even and lastly we could also look at it in terms of sales revenue then we would take that margin of safety in units times that selling price we had of $100 per unit, and that would be a margin of safety and revenue of $750,000. Now that you understand the calculations behind CVP analysis, let's level up to a past exam question that I found in the study hub. I've got that question here on my screen. Why don't you pause the video, see if you can do it on your own, when you've finished, roll the video, we'll do it together. Welcome back. First thing that I do, I read this requirement and I see they would like us to calculate the margin of safety. So before I go into the little story and look at all of the details, I'm going to recall that formula and write it on scratch paper. So I know that the margin of safety is the difference between some budgeted or planned activity level. And then from that we subtract a break even point. And the difference then is the margin of safety, which I will abbreviate here MOS, margin of safety. So I've got several things to do before I can get to the final answer. I need to get the planned activity in units, and then I also need to get a break-even point in units. So I see right now we've got sales revenue is 62,500. And they tell us that the selling price is $2. The company makes a single product which it sells for $2. So at this point, I can get the sales revenue, the planned activity level in units. And that would be the, the 62,500 divided by two, $2 a unit. And that's going to give me 31,250 31, units. Now I see that number here. That's, the first, that's a distractor here. It's not going to be that. So that was step one. Now, step two, we've got to get that break even point in units. So I remember now that the break even point will be the fixed costs. Do we have some fixed costs? We do. 13,000 per month. divided by a contribution per unit. And look at this. 
They don't give me contribution per unit directly, they give me CS ratio. So now I actually have a third step. I've got to get the contribution per unit. And we can do that with some basic algebra. If we say that the CS ratio is equal to the price over the contribution per unit, well, I can substitute those numbers and get the contribution per unit because do we know the CS ratio? What do they tell us? That it's 0 0.4. So I can put a 0 0.4 here. Do they tell us the price? Yes, they do. The price is two point is two dollars. So with this information, we can now solve for the contribution per unit. 0 0.4 times 2 would be 80 cents, right? 0 0.8. Now, with that contribution per unit, we can plug that right here. And the break-even point in units then is equals 16,250. Oh, look, another distractor there, 16,250. So what I've got to do then is subtract 16,250 from the planned activity level, and the margin of safety then is 15,000 units. That is the answer to this question. The answer, guys, is A. Ladies and gentlemen, those are the main concepts and calculations behind cost, volume, profit analysis. You are now equipped to go back into the study hub, work through that chapter, and try the remaining activities.